No jokey intros this time. This this piece is a monument to my dog who passed on at the near the beginning of the month, February, and hopefully a source of some catharsis for me. Literally a tomb entrance. It seems that for the universe has some grim sense of humor. The impetus for the project is Cetra. The imperishable, the king of kings, conqueror of the sun, etc, etc, etc. From the amazing February Patreon of uh, Titan Forge Miniatures. Uh, I really, really like this model, and even with the unfinished paint job it has in this footage here, it ended up inspiring me to create a desert tomb ruined entrance so much that I just had to do it, and I definitely think I want to make some more. So if you end up liking what you see, hit that subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when more of these come out, because there were more miniatures in this set that are pretty damn impressive. The, the base is a chunk of foam that I then took out the center to create a staircase working down with only a knife. You can do this with only a knife, but you could also do it a lot easier with a hot wire cutter if you want to get a cleaner cut, cleaner cut and not have to do quite as much cleanup. Um, the hot wire cutter would probably make this look more like a more recent tomb or ruin entrance, depending on what thematically you're going for. In my particular case, I wanted a much older, more decayed looking entrance. So the rough, so the rough cuts with the knife are perfectly fine. Uh, quick pro tip, save the cast offs from the foam for broken walls, debris, and gap filler. So the overall construction starts with roughly fitting together the steps into it and then putting them in there with a dollop of hot glue and not really wor worrying about any gaps. I'm planning on filling this thing with sand blocking. Then I started laying out the framing of the steps and working on the vertical uh, details. It's here I decided to integrate these like these worked stone panels into the plaster cast rocks themselves. And uh, I went through a number of configurations and ideas at this point, not entirely sure what I wanted to go for, but I wanted something fairly dramatic. So I elected for the shape I eventually decided on here. Uh, I also decided at this point that I did not want to add any kind of uh, detail specifically to the worked stone uh, pieces. Anything out there I imagine would have been weathered away. Uh, so the plaster cast rocks are being held in place with hot glue just as a temporary measure, and then I laid a tile-like pattern on the interior of the tomb to give some play space and some definition, along with some more steps leading down. Uh, when selecting them, I did make sure to grab the a slightly U-shaped rock plaster piece so I could still get my hands and any players get their hands into the interior of the tomb if it ends up going becoming part of a battle map. And still, while still suggesting that it is the top of this tomb without having it being too heavy, heavy or visually oppressive. Uh, visually, this trick, this trick could, this trick definitely worked and I could probably take it further, could have taken it further with a removable roof. Uh, just an idea, maybe for a modular system in the future. The plaster and foam are melded together with sculpt mold as a binding agent that will give a very solid bond. Cannot recommend this stuff enough. 
Uh, after about 10 minutes, I came back and did some more blending and filling in some of the gaps here and there with some more sculpt mold and just getting things uh, nice and ready to go. Um, the uh, overall, I could have spent some more time blending things in more properly, really sculpting, using. Uh, moving the sculpt and mold in such a way to actually make it look more natural. But ultimately, letting it dry the way I did just added some interesting textures to the rock face. That definitely... I mean, I, I personally enjoy the way they come out. And they tend to per paint up pretty nicely. The last step of the construction came when I decided to rip and tear down the uh, staircase walls. So I just ripped some chunks off of them, mixed in a few dozen skulls, and created some piles outside. And then threw a bit of sculpt mold in to uh, give it some stability and keep it in place. Some more skulls went into the interior tomb, in the interior of the tomb itself, uh, but there was an incident later on. <laughs> One thing about the sword trains that's not going to see a lot of regular use. Uh, so giving it some interesting features, in this case the skulls in the rubble in the uh, interior of the tomb itself, helped to give the player the question of how and why they are there gives a background and a history of use to the entire piece as like a as the composition itself kind of pulls at the pulls at the imagination. If you like this type of composition approach to things, uh, some future videos are going to be more about uh, selling realism. So remember to ring that bell and subscribe. Well, moving on to the painting section. I hit the entire thing with an array of reds, yellows, browns, and tans. The goal was, I was definitely inspired by the Valley of the Kings uh, and the rock cliffs of Egypt. So the entire thing was hit with a cheap red-brown craft paint that will serve as a connector between the worked stone of the ruins and the rock itself. It ties them all together in such a way to say that I am a rock face which has been worked by some other force, but I am still I. Uh, the rock face itself was then given a series of dry brushes starting with a yellow-brown and then working that towards a off-white, tan, almost bone-ish color, which I then finished off with a white highlight, which in places it ended up being a bit too heavy. I know I missed a few areas as I'm painting, uh, but that's all right. Most of them will be taken care of by the blocking and later steps. As for the stone, it, the work stone itself, the work stone itself was given a series of uh, heavier dry brushes of the off-white tan and white to pull it out from the rocks. Well, just a little bit of that yellow-brown that served as the initial dry brush of the rock only appears at the edges as a kind of a blending tone, if you will. Uh, using the same palette is key here, but the amount and the quantity of each color can lead to very different stories being visually told. When it came to washing the stones, I decided to set myself a challenge. No black washes. Insane, I know. And I started working with a green, brown, and a purple wash, with the purple wash going into the deepest recesses 
and the areas that are going to be the least exposed to erosion are tucked away into corners to try to simulate shadow and build up color there. The brown green wash uh, could be controlled to an extent by watering it down and help to create something of a uh, desert patina and pull back some of that overbrushed white color here and there. that done and dried overnight I came back to find that hey I like the piece I like the way it was working it was all right and it was all right and I didn't want to go back in there with more washes at the time without having a better idea what the final product was adding the sand came next and for this I chose a mix of fine and coarse ballast to simulate sands that had blown into the blown into the tomb over time obvious tip here I use this blocking and balance like this to cover gaps in unpainted areas all the time. With a bit of watered down mod I kept on laying down layers of the coarse and fine ballast until I was relatively happy. Uh, the interior of the tomb might, need, might have needed a little more and I mostly ended up covering up the pile of skulls on the inside, but it was a, in my opinion, a, something of a happy accident. It adds some subtle clues to the interior and something that's interesting, kind of a reward for the person looking at it, who kind of takes more than a few moments to look inside and go, hey, what's that? However, once it dried, I wasn't happy. The colors didn't work for me anymore, and they, they were simply too flat. Uh, in part, this is because of the design with the pad of foam in front of the stairs being flat and I hadn't put any dramatic texturing, let's say, on top of it to kind of break up the evenness of the ground. But then there was the colors. I turned around at this point, looking inside the tomb, it was too bright or what was supposed to be a dark entrance with no light sources that I was planning on putting in. So I decided to do something radical. <laughs> I broke my rule and pulled out the black wash and just kept going till the entire thing was coated. Instantly I liked the instantly I liked the sand coloration better. And even the rocks themselves started to look better, while the interior was darkened up in a way that I definitely felt was more appropriate than the brighter colors. Um, once that was done, went back with a final dry brush over the sand to restore just a bit of that color uh, and some light touch-ups to the skull, just a quick lick of bone white to pick them out. I'm ready, I was ready to call this piece done. All told, this project took me six days to complete. The first two were fine. I got to the point of being ready to put sand on it, and then my dog died. <laughs> and it took four days after he passed to actually get the will to finish it. But finishing it was one of the most cathartic things I've done and it's this entire piece realized now a fitting tribute to my little puppers and the 16 years I had with him so I'm not going to critique my work I can't it has problems it has some admirable bits it's got some lazy shorthand but it's a memorial that I didn't know I was building. I mean, perhaps that was always the plan, but now I know what I know, and 
What I know is that I think of him every time I put it on the table or glance at it. There's no easy way to end this or really call, issue a call to action to you, the viewer who's gotten this far. I, I want to, I, but I want to leave you with be thankful for the time you have with your loved ones, pets, and draw creative inspiration even from those last times you have with them. There's no greater monument to life lived than to than to use them as inspiration to create a piece of art. <laughs>